All right, is my audio quiet again? No, you're good. This is like the beginning of every LAN party ever. Yeah, that's kind of creepy too, because it's it's Halloween. Let me see what happens if I do this. No, that's not it. That hurt. Yeah. That was a bit loud. That screechy sound. Yeah! That's that's good, yeah. I think I'm just one of those guys where you go, oh my god! Right. One ear's fine, Mark. <laughs> we don't. We're not saying goodbye for the show. We're just saying goodbye for Jason. So if you've been watching our series of videos, you might do really, really well with this. But let me introduce uh, my good friend, Richard Porter. Richard, uh, why don't you say a little bit about yourself, what you do? Hi, I'm Richard Porter. Uh, I'm one of those troublemakers inside Palo Alto Networks that tries to do good stuff. Uh, I'm going to try to do my best to not bomb out in front of your audience. We'll see what happens. <laughs> so one of the reasons why I'm so excited about this is because not only do we have Richard joining us, but we have yet another character, and that is Richard's office. So really, the special guest here is Richard's office. Oh, <laughs> You've got some and, amazing and things there. I'll, I'll power it on for your audience. Oh, awesome. It really works. Like watch It the is a genuine Commodore 64, and this is my favorite video game. This is Gateway to AppShy. I don't uh, know if you know what this is. This is one of the first ever twitch based video games you actually have to use the joystick and move the joystick to make the little 8-bit object do something and the 8-bit object goes and hits another object on the screen it's fantastic it's one of my favorite toys you know it's sad when you said twitch based i was thinking the vi the gaming streaming service twitch no 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 you twitch <laughs> as in you have to move you have to actually move to make it move nice and there it is so and is that a sextant and a telescope behind you i see over there it is indeed <laughs> It is indeed. That's my nautical stuff. Nice. So you, you're split brain, right? You got nautical on one side, geek on the other side. Is that how it goes? Uh, I don't know. It's all a mush. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's Richard's brain projected into his bookcase. Right? That's awesome. There's some gaming stuff up there for some real gaming nerds. You'll get it. I don't see Half-Life 2 or the fabled Half-Life 3 anywhere. Nope. So I'll fall out. There's vault, oh, there's vault, okay. vault bobbleheads up there. Nice. And my... Vault Tech uh, lunchbox and my Pit Boy. Yep, yep, some good stuff. Excellent. Now we also have with us uh, Mark Bowling, and many of you have been watching our episode might recognize Mark because we did a special episode with him on Expedition, and um, uh, Mark also has a, a special talent when it comes to music. So he and I, uh, he kind of schooled me in the, the, his guitar skills. We did some bar hopping and he jumped on stage and played some guitar. So that was a good time. Mark, why don't you say hi and, and tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, I'm Mark. Uh, I uh, teach the, uh, the professional services and the uh, customer simulation workshop classes here at Palo Alto. Okay. So for those of you guys watching this, um, remember that you can learn more about PanOS 9.0 and our new features guide. And even with some of the latest releases, like 9.02, there are some new features as well. So be sure to check that out. So let's start with our very first question. And so the, here's, how, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to read the question. And we don't have a buzzer. So you guys have to buzz in with whatever you say. In favorite. the chat? No, just say buzz or bzzz, oh. uh, or whatever buzz sound you want to make. Like the Muppets, the, the, the Sesame Street. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so we'll let Richard will do the yep, yep. So you're going to jump in there. Okay, so which new feature in 9.0 helps you remove unused applications from over-provisioned application-based rules? Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> so Richard, yeah, we both, we, it's just pretty easy. It's, uh, for, for those that aren't aware, Policy Optimizer is a great way to take your rules that are uh, really broad and really understand what's hitting them. So, you know, I've seen in practice SSL over non-standard ports and most interesting, you know, say you see you have a TCP rule that's 
going outbound 3389 on a TCP port and you think, oh yeah, I'm fine, that's just RDP, unless you're really examining it at, at the application layer, you might have SSH going out on that port and Policy Optimizer. Not only can you clean up your rules, it's also got a nice little extra feature in there where it'll let you know, a warning, I see this on a non-usual port, take a look at this. So it's a great feature. I'm surprised that you, you're you cool with RDP going outbound because you can map drives with RDP. So exfiltration is... Oh, I'm not is, cool with it. Oh, okay, okay. I was just checking. No, no, I mean, I'm not cool with it. I'm just telling you what I've seen. Nice, nice. Yeah, I mean, I see... Uh, hypothetical story, right? But back in the day, RDP over port 80 was quite common for me or yep. 53 because people would think, well, you got to allow DNS. Internet doesn't work without DNS. Well, so many things work also over that same port and the policy optimizer i'm glad you pointed that out great way to spot uh traffic sneaking through your port based rules ssh over uh if we if we have time later S ssh over 443 is a uh fun one yeah that's a big one yeah, yeah. a lot of a lot of data a lot of data gets packed up over ssh over 443 all right next question true or false you can use fqdns and static routes pbf rules and bgp peer settings who see anything on the screen you Does threw he, us an easy confidence go. builder, and now you hit us with something tough. I vote true. Did you I'm going to go say true. true. It's true. It has to be true. It's, it's on the screen. I didn't mean it. Yeah, Can yeah. You guys, somebody said they didn't see anything on the screen. You no, I saw it. Yeah, and I was doing my buzzer. Did you hear it? That's fantastic. That's new. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> well, right. hence the name of the segment, new and 9.0. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm caught up. Which new feature is a 9.0 is a new EDL to help customers control commonly used high risk services. Yep, 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 buzz. Yep, yep, yep. yep, yep. <laughs> Go ahead, Mark, you take it. I, I, you I know the risk categories. <laughs> that's the high true. risk and low, yeah, URL risk categories. That's true. Uh, and, are... But the reason why that's wrong, Mark, is because it's not an EDL. But that is oh, a new, uh, that is a new feature. IPs. Bulletproof, yep. <laughs> Bulletproof IPs are fantastic. That's a great, you, you should be using your external dynamic lists. You can use them to beat the, the, the whole idea of you can't decrypt Office 365. You definitely can. You can segment out and at least decrypt SharePoint. You can put this in an external dynamic list and manage it. Uh, the, the external dynamic list is a very powerful feature. If you're not familiar with this for your audience out there, definitely get in and look at this. And, and what's nice is they've allowed you to have more, they've allowed you to have more IPs per EDL and stuff. So yep. now you can, that's true. 50 K your, your EDLs are a lot. Yeah. Your EDLs are a lot more powerful now than they used to be. Well, actually it's, it depends on the platform you've got. I was just playing with my 220 the other day and it's 50 K, but the bigger boxes can do more. And for folks not familiar with Bulletproof IPs, the, you can sign up for a Bulletproof ISP and their whole marketing thing is they won't block you even if you're peddling in very nefarious types of traffic. So I, I've yet to come across any legitimate service that uses that traffic. So might as well block it. All right, next question. Mm -hmm. What new virtualization feature manages interactions between the VM series firewalls and public private cloud deployments. Yeah, I'm going to have to guess. I'm going to have to guess on this one, but I think I know what it is. I'm probably going to be wrong. Mark? One thing I want to point out is all of these are new features, and, and so, so which one of these enables interaction between the VM series firewall and cloud deployments? I'm going to go with the uh, VM series plugins. Yeah, Mark's that's going to be it. my vote too. Mark's that's got it. That was. But for the record, that was a guess. I wasn't quite sure. Good job, guys. <laughs> so what features are new to Destination App, excuse me, <clears throat> starting in 9.02? Advanced new session distribution. It's got to be DNS rewrite. And no, again, it's a guess. session distribution. Is it session distribution? Yeah, session distribution. This is one thing that's really nice that you could take uh, uh, multiple uh, source IPs, uh, where the traffic was going to multiple destination IPs and have them uh, destination that to a single IP address. That's one then, thing that... Uh, oh, starting in 902. Then, then how come it, his, oh, his screen oh, yeah, says point. DNS rewrite? There it is. I missed that point. Yeah, oh. but there is the session distribution in I 90. agree. You didn't form your uh, answer in the form of a question, sir. <laughs> 
Yeah, come to think about it, that session distribution happened in eight dot one. So we're we're all like completely wrong. That's you know, all right. We're all it's it, we're all going to be wrong occasionally. Okay? It, it, it's it, still there. I mean, it's it's not all right. It is what's new in nine zero, but it's what's yeah. it should be what's still there in nine zero because we would have been right. Well, oh, sure. Justify it, Mitch. Come on, keep going. <laughs> I'm it. trying my hardest, man. <laughs> <laughs> give up. Yeah, man. I'm done. <laughs> done and out. Okay, what does the new DNS security service subscription detect? You have to chime in with your buzz, buzz. I buzzed. What, what is your buzz sound? I'm not I hearing. have different ones each time. That's a train whistle. Do you not hear it? Let me do it again. No, I'm not hearing it. Oh, right. I can't restart it. Oh, well. Uh, DGAs. Yeah, okay, that would be my... One. And tunnels. Yeah, tunnels in the way. I, I cheated, though, because I helped make that episode where we talked about it. I, I think this particular feature is one that would be one of the primary reasons someone should consider moving to consider moving to 9.0 just for this feature alone. You know, I want to, can I talk about DJs for just one second? I give an analogy about how DGAs work and I think it's a domain generation algorithm is a misunderstood feature. So I give an analogy. It's not a hundred percent accurate, but it's close enough. Do you guys remember those RSA token code key fob things or like your Google authenticator that yeah. sits and makes up numbers? Well, there's a seed, or there's an algorithm that has, you know, it's how I'm going to make up a number and then you feed in a seed value. And when you scan that barcode, that's the seed value. And so there's the server side making up the number and then there's the client side making up the number and they're both making up the same number at the same time. So if I'm a malware guy, I would use a domain generation algorithm and that algorithm is not terribly different than that RSA token code thing. And I just feed my malware with a seed value and my server invents domain names at the same rate that my client's inventing domain names. And then when I'm ready, I go register those domain names. They might only live for five minutes, but the client guesses the correct domain name at the correct time when that domain is generated and can now communicate to that domain. How do you stop against something like that unless you have a way of spotting that technique or that tactic and then blocking domains that are generated based on that, that type of algorithm? And that's essentially what our DNS security service allows you to do. That's pretty cool. I, I didn't know about that. We're yeah. silence. Any, you guys have that turned on on your uh, home devices? Yeah. Absolutely. My son came yeah. from college. Yeah. He plugs in his laptop, and I just upgraded to 9.0. And in my threat logs, it was saying DGAs and tunnels. I mean, it clearly showed me that he had some sort of malware on his machine that he picked up there at, at College Land. And um, the, the DNS security service labeled this specific traffic and whether it was detecting it as DGA or, or, or as a DNS tunnel. I thought that was cool. Interesting. <clears throat> you know what? You're lucky that that's all he caught at college. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and he just brought home a computer virus. Right. <laughs> Next question. Well, Dr. J. Here we go. What's missing from URL filtering in 9.0? What's missing from URL filtering in 9.0? Look yeah. at the screenshot. What, what don't you see there? Yeah, my bifocals don't let me see. <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what is missing? That was me chiming in. If that oh, came across, I didn't hear it. No, go ahead. Uh, Richard chimes. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a Homer Simpson burp. That's nice. Go. I heard it that I, time. I think it's custom categories. Good guess. Yeah, good guess. Now, custom categories are there if you scroll down. Okay. You know what, though? Well, you're, that's you're what's missing on, from the screen. Oh, override. You're on the right track. You need to use custom categories to block or, or allow certain things. So you're totally in the right, right avenue. Because before, with overrides, you'd go in and you'd say, oh, I want to block this. I don't want to block this. Well, what if you have 12 URL filtering profiles? Now, to add a single URL to block, you got to go touch all 12 or more. And that really is a bad practice. If you look at how we designed the, the BPA and our recommendations around URL filtering profiles, it's better to use custom URL filtering categories yeah. for things like blocks or allows that would be an exception to the PanDB provided categories and for, the action you give them. For those just tuning in or not used to playing the home game, Mitch, when he was talking about the BPA, is talking about our best practice analysis. And we, we, we could have a whole episode on that. But there's a tool out there that will allow you to baseline compared to what 
all of the smart people, none of them are on this call right now, by the way, <laughs> all of the smart True. people that wrote that stuff down to say, this is the stuff you want to do. So BPA. <laughs> That's good. Well played. We're almost done. So got a few more questions. What is required for HTTP slash two inspection and panelist 9.0? There are two. That broke up. Say that again. Um, oh, there we go. What is required? Yeah. Now, I'm going to guess, but I'm not sure. I'm, it's it's a, for me. It's a toss up between SSL decryption, which I think is required because you got to get into the header, or uh, or it's LGAM, or it's the encryption, the 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 ECDHE, which is one of the one of the um, ciphers that is required because HTTP two is really strict. And uh, oh, holy crap! Well done. Holy you crap. Were... Okay, so I reverse engineered that from my protocol knowledge, not from my 9.0 <laughs> knowledge. So, <laughs> okay. Wow. All right. All right. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tap out on that one. I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish strong. Can I, can I make a comment on that? Um, so I, there's this website I really like to read. It's a super geeky website called Gizmodo. And they recently went to HTTP2 or possibly HTTP3, which is in draft, I believe, right now. And I observed that even though I'm doing SSL decryption, <clears throat> their website would not load for me. And I loaded up SSL decryption. And inside of your decryption profile, you can set to strip the ALPN which is how you force a 9.0 firewall to take certain types of traffic and force it down to HTTP 1.1. So for whatever reason, the HTTP 2 plus traffic was not flowing for me, but by stripping that ALPN, I forced the, the session down to 1.1. Everything's great again. So something to think about. What does ALPN stand for? I have no idea. Let me Google it. Because <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> so I was hoping you did. Right, you Call me out. That? We're going to do our last question. Application layer protocol negotiation. Oh, there you go. We learned okay, something. So, Mitch, you can't answer this question because this comes from your content that you did in our video. Fair. You need to source a security policy rule for print devices. You identify these devices by convention using third octet of their IP address. What new 9.0 feature will help you do this? Oh, there's a... There's a bulk rename feature. There's a bulk variable feature. I don't remember what it's called. That's where my head's at. That's a panorama feature you're thinking about, but good job. Template variables. Me, so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tap out on this one. I'm waiting for See, somebody I, smart to answer I, that. I should have just kept quiet with that last question. Wildcard masks. Deep. You know what, though? Right. The two go hand in hand because in scenarios where I would create firewall rules to, to match on only a portion of a, of a subnet address, I could use template variables for specific site locations to, uh, to vary whatever that, that portion is. So I think that template variables and wildcard masks in many situations go hand in hand, Richard. So I give you credit for that. Did, did not, no, I'm, I'm not going to take the credit because I didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know what it was. So. But thanks. So I'm a, a I'll give you credit for it too. Example of a wildcard mask. <clears throat> and folks who want to learn more about that can go to the new features guide or you know, watch the early episode where we talk about some of the new features of Panelist 9.0. Now you folks at home, how did you do? How well did you know 9.0? There's a lot of features to know. Uh, and we're about, what are we, almost nine months in now to, to 9.0. That's actually an appropriate time frame. In closing, this is a bittersweet episode because Mitch and I have new roles. So learning happy hour is changing. And unfortunately, we're not going to be your hosts anymore. We've had a lot of fun doing this together. And in the future, you might see some more Learning Happy Hour episodes just with some different faces. We want to thank everybody for watching these shows. And we've heard a lot of great feedback from you. A lot of people come up to us. We have just had total strangers in the airport come up to him and say we love these shows. So thank you so much for watching. And stay tuned because Learning Happy Hour will be back. You know, just because Jason and I's roles are changing does not mean that the live community is at all going away. It's a fantastic resource for all of you to plug into. And the greater community is consistently contributing tips, tricks, lessons learned, things you should know. So stay subscribed to the, learning, uh, the live 
<laughs> the live community, and keep your eyes open for future episodes from Learning Happy Hour. As Jason said, different faces, but still great content for you all to enjoy. And we want to say a special thank you to Richard and to Mark for joining yes. us in this episode. Thank you guys both. Thanks for great. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for it the was. fun humiliation. It's fantastic. Yeah, That's great. It was great to be, it was great to show off how little I know. It was <laughs> and you know what? You did great at that. <laughs> I did. I do well at that very often. I'm just you. teasing. I'm just teasing. You guys were awesome. Thank you for being good sports and for yep. playing our little game. Sure. Thanks guys. It was a lot of fun. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for watching this episode of Learning Happy Hour. At Palo Alto Networks, we are strong advocates of continuous learning, and we hope you are too. To continue learning about our fantastic products and services, you can attend a class with one of our authorized training centers, or you can self-study about these products and services our digital e-learning courses. And if you like this episode of Learning Happy Hour, consider watching this one or this one. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And thanks again for watching.